homogeneity of variance is the assumption that our samples all have the same variance. So if you have a residual plot, and remember residuals refer to the error, um, in this plot the middle line is the mean, and each of the data points refers to how far each of the data points strays from that mean, that being the residual. So if you look at that very first data point, it could be if your mean was 50, that data point could say that it's 5 points away from 50. So when we look at our residual plot, we basically want there to be no recognizable shape to show that our variance is not systematic, our error is not systematic. It's uniform and all throughout we don't see any kinds of trends. The error is symmetrical. In this plot we have heterogeneity of variance, meaning that we can find some sort of systematic trend in our error. If you look at the right side of the plot, this again being a residual plot, the error over there is much more varied than it is on the left side of the plot, showing that perhaps something systematic is happening to our variance. It's not symmetrical here. So as the value of your independent variable increases here, so also does the range of the dependent variable variance. If you can see any kind of shape with your residual, such as a triangle or a curve or any other kind of recognizable trend, then you have a problem. Generally, if you violate homogeneity variance, it increases your chances of making a type 1 error because this usually comes from violations of normality of your distribution. There are ways that you can check your homogeneity variance in SPSS or now called PASW, you can check the Levine's test, which is a test um, that subtracts the mean from each data point and then does an ANOVA on the resulting numbers. In SPSS, if you find that your Levine's test has a significant number, less than 0.05 or 0.01 or whatever your cutoff is, then you significantly violated homogeneity of variance. The Brown-Forsyth test is very similar to Levine's test. It also tests for homogeneity variance. But here, you're subtracting the median from each data point instead of the mean as in the Levine's test. And the reason why we do that is because, remember, the mean is more susceptible to outliers than the median is. Again, if you violate the Brown-Forsyth test, then you violate homogeneity of variance. The last type of variance test that you can use is the Fmax test, which is where you simply take your largest variance divided by your smallest variance, um, and you get a ratio. If that ratio is greater than 9, then it's generally significant, and you violated homogeneity of variance. When you have a within-subjects design or repeated measures design, then you have an additional assumption called sphericity, because in repeated measures, the error term is the person themselves. You're repeating, you're comparing a person to themselves. So in the assumption of sphericity, if one person moves, think of it as a school of fish, everyone else needs to move in the same way. So if person A responds to treatment 2 very badly, then you would expect everybody else to respond to treatment 2 badly as well. If you have an entire group of people and only one person is reacting very differently from everybody else, that may be a type of error that is related to something else about your designer to that person themselves and not to your actual independent variable that you're manipulating.